Today marks 21 days without a Speaker of the House. Just for context, that's not great. Republicans at this point appear no closer to appointing one today than they were three weeks ago. Oh, they are moving forward in a process. It's now an eight-way race to be Speaker. These are the eight individuals, the eight men who are currently running for Speaker. It's down from nine candidates after Pennsylvania Congressman Dan Muser dropped out during a conference meeting last night. Now, Republican leaders say they would like to elect a new Speaker by this evening when they meet again behind closed doors throughout the course of the day. So you might be wondering, who are these guys and where do they stand on the key issues? Now, it's important to note, issues not exactly the driving force behind who will be the next Speaker in this Republican conference, but where they stand is critical. Let's start with aid for Ukraine. That has obviously been an issue that has divided the conference over the course of the last several months, and it comes as the administration has put together a very significant emergency aid package, including $60 billion for Ukraine. When it comes to the last vote on Ukraine aid back in September, four of the individuals who are running voted yes, four voted no. Tom Emmer, who is a member of leadership, the current House Majority Whip, uh, he was a yes. Leadership often votes with where the the top of the conference is Austin Scott, Jack Bergman, Pete Sessions also yes votes. Mike Johnson, Byron Donalds, Kevin Hearn, Gary Palmer, they were all no votes, representing, I think, the split that is very clear within the conference. What about the 2020 election? That has been a guiding force for the individual who's the current front runner in the Republican Party, who was the president back then. Well, that's a little bit more aligned. Now, voted to certify the 2020 election back on January 6th, two Republicans, Tom Emmer and Austin Scott, did vote to certify six chose not to at the behest of Trump and many of his allies. But before you say Tom Emmer and Austin Scott very much aligned with actual democracy, not necessarily as much. When you look at who signed on to the Texas brief asking the Supreme Court to consider overturn the election, that initial lawsuit, well, all of them who were in Congress at the time, including Emmer, including Austin Scott, they signed on. So while they voted to certify, Scott and Emmer did sign on to that lawsuit to essentially invalidate uh, the 2020 election. What about actual votes recently? The Fiscal Responsibility Act, the debt ceiling bill uh, that really launched this entire breakdown, implosion of the Republican conference. Four of those who are running voted yes on that bill. Four voted no, kind of highlighting the conservative split to some sort about keeping the government open. That's something that they should probably be fairly cognizant of right now. November 17th is the current deadline. Four voted yes, three voted no. One, Byron Donalds, did not vote. The expectation was that he would have voted no. The one primary split you see where one member really splits off from the rest is on gay marriage, where Tom Emmer did vote on the Protect Same-Sex Marriage Act in 2022. Emmer is a yes, everybody else is a no. This isn't one of the top issues within the conference right now, but what this underscores, this entire kind of range of issues, is that this isn't necessarily an issue-based election. This has been more of a personality run up to this point. And the big question for Emmer, who is a member of leadership, who does have some high-profile support already, including former Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy, is where does Trump stand? His endorsements haven't won out up to this point. He's 0 for 2 right now in these races. However, Emmer and he have a history, and it's not exactly a great one, They've had some phone calls, whether or not that will help him get over the line over the course of the day or days or weeks at this point. We'll have to wait and see. Poppy? Please, please don't say weeks. So. <laughs> Listen to what Donald Trump said when asked if he'd support Emmer's bid. Would you endorse uh, Tom Emmer for speaker? He hasn't historically been your biggest fan, but he is the most likely candidate right now. Well, I think he's my biggest fan now because he called me yesterday and he told me I'm your biggest fan. So I don't know about that. Uh, well, we're looking at a lot of people and, you know, I'm sort of trying to stay out of that as much as possible. I said there's only one person that can do it all the way. You know who that is? Jesus Christ. <laughs> if Jesus came down and said, I want to be speaker, he would do it. That's a high bar. With us now, CNN's chief national. I think he's running. Is he <laughs> wasn't there last night at the conference meeting. So maybe today. Maybe today. Maybe hunt. <laughs> Morning. Okay. Hi guys. Okay. So Tom Emmer, um, Trump likes him. I thought it was interesting. I had asked. But he's no Jesus Christ. Bobby. No. 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 Sorry. No. Like I said, high bar. <laughs> but I had said yesterday. I had asked about the fact that he and Austin Scott did vote to certify the election, and does that hurt them in the conference? But then there's also the fact that he questioned a lot about the election, and that, for example, that amicus brief in Texas uh, back in 2020, a number of the efforts to try to overturn it. Listen to this from then. This president is making sure that uh, he stays focused and his team stays focused on these, these questionable uh, uh, election practices that, uh, you know, we're, we're going to find out uh, if if so and if it's accurate how much uh, they skewed the outcome of the election in Georgia and elsewhere.
So he did vote to certify, but that brief in Texas was to basically throw out the results of the election in a number of swing states. So I, I suppose he didn't upset the president too much. <laughs> well, president. Poppy, look, I think I think that that was in the context of, you know, when the Trump campaign was going through the legal challenges. And I think for a lot of Republicans in that period, they were willing to say, OK, sure, anyone has the right to go to court to talk about this stuff. Of course, later we learned over time that the courts rejected all of these uh, appeals, right? Um, and then you get uh, to uh, January of 2021 when we face these certification questions um, and, of course, what happened on January 6th. And, you know, while Trump was up in New Hampshire uh, saying those things that you showed about Emmer, saying, I'm not trying to get involved, like only Jesus Christ could win, he was actually reposting later that day attacks against Emmer on his social media. So it's clear that there's an issue here. I, you know, I think the challenge, you know, and Phil, you pointed this out, we don't fully understand how much influence Trump has here. He obviously wanted Jim Jordan to be speaker. He didn't have enough juice to get Jordan into the, to, to get him the gavel. I think it's more likely he does have enough juice in the conference to sink somebody that he doesn't want. And if he really applies himself to sinking Emmer's bid, that could happen. But I do think that exhaustion factor is really setting in. And I think you saw last night, member after member, telling our team, look, we got to get this done. We are, we are over this. I think they are starting to see in their polling just how bad it looks for the American people. And they uh, are realizing that they're going to start to get punished for it if they don't actually move. Now, whether it's enough, you know, we'll see. Yeah, the pain threshold's been much higher than I suspected, given the fact we're 21 days. But that's a great point. When are they going to break? It feels like it's about there. We'll have to wait and see. Casey Hunt, thank you, as always.